Hello everyone. Welcome to Software Testing Help. I'm Sharmila and in this session I'll show you how to automate a web application in Android Chrome browser. Now I have connected the mobile device to the system. Uh, let me first uh, confirm whether the system is able to recognize the device for that I go to command prompt and type in the command saying ADB devices. It should list the device name in its response. Yeah, I got the device name, the response, which means that my system is able to recognize the device that I have connected. Now we are free to perform automation on this device. Uh, I'll be performing automation on this Chrome browser and I'm selecting an application saying Amazon.com. Let's see how to handle automation on this web app in Chrome browser. I have a class created and here, here I'll declare the driver. I say web driver driver and using decide properties. I am going to store all the properties of browser device name uh, the version number etc. First let me create the object for the class desired properties. Sorry desired capabilities and then using this object I will set all the properties of my device and browser. So first comes the device name and then the platform name, the browser name and the version number. The device name corresponds to the device that we have attached currently. So in this case, we got the device name from ADB devices command. Just get the device name and uh, pass it over here. In the platform name, I'm going to perform automation on the Android device. On this Android device, so my platform is going to be uh, Android. And the browser name is the Chrome browser. And the version number corresponds to your Android version number. Just go to your mobile device, get the latest Android version and pass that version number over here. So go to settings about phone and here you have your Android version. Pass the 5.1 version over here. Now these information are sufficient for APM in order to establish a connection with the device. Let me write the test case now. So first we'll start by initiating the driver. In this case, I'll initiate a remote web driver. The reason being we are going to perform automation on a remote device or on another mobile device. Uh, the automation is not going to be performed on the local computer. So I am initiating a remote web driver. Whenever we use remote web driver, we have to specify the server address with which we'll be talking to the mobile device. In this case, I'm using APM server with which I'll be talking to the mobile device. So I go to APM and get the server address, the server address and the port number and this I will pass it over here. Along this I will pass the other properties as well. Now what will happen is that when this line is invoked, um, the client will talk to the APM and pass all this information and APM will read this information and establish the session with the mobile device. The automation code that holds the device details, browser details and the test cases is what we call as the client. The APM is a server during runtime. The client will send these commands to the server. The server will read those commands and uh, establish a connection with the mobile device and makes automation run on this device. So that's how we call the uh, APM as a client server ar architecture. Now the next few steps is going to be quite easy. Next you have to pass the URL in the address bar because now your connection is ready with the mobile device and the Chrome browser. Next you have to just pass the address in the address bar. So mine is going to be www.amazon.com. And the next part is we should interact with the web element and perform the action. Now in order to recognize a particular web element on your uh, Android Chrome browser, you can't use the same technique that you, you are using for your uh, web app in your laptop. The reason being um, the structure basically differs for both the web application when opened on a mobile device and when opened on a laptop or a PC. I've just opened it simultaneously for you to have a better understanding the same application. Okay, I've opened it on the uh, laptop as well as on the mobile device. Um, and you can see that the structure is entirely different. For example, just consider this header. You can see the header is not present inside your mobile device. So for each device, it is behaving differently. So the identification technique is also going to differ. So always have this in mind. Never try to create an XPath on a laptop and don't use it on a mobile device. For a mobile device, you have to create an XPath um, uniquely for that purpose. Let me show you how for this you have an app. Just go to Play Store and uh, get this app downloaded. Inspect and edit HTML live. Have it downloaded in your mobile device and once it is done, 
open the application and here open your uh, web application so mine is going to be amazon.com once the application is opened click on this hand icon once you see it highlighted then click on any element that you would like to perform an inspection on for example if i want to do on the search text box i just click on it and you can see the entire html tag of that particular element using this you can uh, uh, decide whichever identification technique you can use for example you can go by id or you can go by class name or you can create a new xpath using id and class name depends upon however you want your web element to get identified now for instance i'm just going by the id so i say driver dot find element by id and and i'm just calling an action called send keys so that's it you just have to understand how to inspect element on an android chrome browser the others are going to be the same you can create an xpath you can go by class name you can go by a link text so those features are the same but only thing is that how do you identify it on your mobile device now the main difference of performing automation on a native app and on a web app in your android device is that here you mention android if it is on a native app and along with that you also mention the application package name activity name etc but when you're doing it on a browser you can directly open the application using the url so not necessary to mention the application package name activity name that is totally not necessary in this case and the other major difference between native app and the web app is uh, the identification technique that you use ui automator viewer to identify and here it's just a simple inspect element with which you'll uh, create your own xparts or id etc now when i want to run this first i should launch the apm server only then uh, my web driver or the client will talk to the apm and then the apm will talk to the mobile device let the apm server get launched here you can see the command saying well, welcome to apm which means that the apm server is launched now i can run the application so i just right click on this and run as test ng run as test ng so i have both apm and the mobile device getting open simultaneously so that you can see the logs in apm as well as how it is getting automated in the mobile device yes uh, the chrome uh, driver is trying to open the chrome browser and the chrome driver is open now and the url is passed and now it is trying to inspect the element and perform the action on it yeah so that's it uh, that's how you perform automation on your android chrome browser for a web application and one more thing i wanted to highlight the, uh, the chrome driver gets initiated from your apm uh, package so wherever you install apm just go to apm node modules apm again node modules and then open apm chrome driver and here you have your chrome driver.exe file in case if you're not having the latest version just update it update the driver to the latest version only then the automation will go in a smoother way I hope you uh, you got a very good understanding in uh, handling automation on a Chrome browser in an Android device. Thank you.